This pocket-sized street photography camera looks like it would fit in well with Fujifilm's very popular line of mirrorless cameras and premium compacts. But unlike Fujifilm's cameras, which are currently experiencing a bit of a price hike due to low supply and very high demand, I managed to buy this camera in mint condition for just $300. So why is nobody talking about this camera and what makes it just so good for street photography? Well, this is the Pentax MX-1 and it's around 10 years old now. It came out about the same time as Fujifilm released the original X-Pro1, where retro-inspired cameras were becoming a bit of a trend. With a rich history in film SLRs and obviously not wanting to miss out on all of the action, Pentax responded by releasing this, a premium compact camera aimed at pros and enthusiasts that took styling influence from the much-loved Pentax MX film SLR. Now, when this camera first came out, I was actually working as a writer for Digital Photo magazine and there was one thing about this camera that I distinctly remember everybody in the office getting super excited about. It wasn't the lens and it wasn't the sensor or any kind of brand new revolutionary technology that Pentax had put into this thing. It was actually the construction, more specifically the top and bottom plates. And that's because both of them are made from solid brass. Now that was done intentionally for two reasons. First, obviously build quality. Solid brass is going to be much better than your typical plastics. But also, as it picks up wear and tear, the black paint actually rubs off and just makes it look even nicer and kind of plays into that whole retro aesthetic that people were going crazy for. I even distinctly remember the press release coming included with photos of this thing looking roughed up and aged just to show off that effect. It was a real selling point for this camera. And to be honest, I really respect Pentax for doing that because it's kind of a leap to say, you know, this is going to fuck up over time, but it is also going to look damn good whilst it's doing it. Although it's fair to say this is a fairly niche camera, there are still quite a few of them knocking around on auction sites like eBay. As I've already mentioned, I managed to pick mine up in the UK for about £250, which equates to about $300 roughly. Also worth mentioning that this camera came in two colour schemes, obviously the all black version like the one I have, and also a silver and black version. Now apparently the all black version is the one to go for because of that brassing effect and therefore it affects the price and these tend to fetch about $50 to $100 more than the silver ones. So if you want to bargain, look out for the silver ones. So getting on to what makes this such a good street photography camera. First of all, in comparison to cameras today, like premium compacts and even mirrorless cameras, this thing is so much smaller and lighter weight. It's actually smaller in size than my smartphone. And that means that I can actually fit this thing into my jacket pocket really easily and I can just carry it around with me everywhere. The handling on this camera is surprisingly good as well. First of all, there's a three inch flip out screen on the back. Obviously that's ideal for street photography because you can get low angles really easily. Unfortunately, there's no EVF and there's also no hot shoe, so you can't add an external EVF on there. But honestly, I was shooting with this thing all day in bright sunlight and I never had a problem being able to see the screen. Now, I am about to contradict myself a little bit here because although I have just said I don't necessarily think this camera needs a viewfinder and broadly speaking, I do absolutely love its classic styling. One thing that I think would have made this camera look that little bit sexier is if it had a center mounted EVF. Not only would this help to fill in the noticeable void on the top plate here, but it would also give the camera a much closer resemblance to the original MX SLR design. Plus also practically it would gain the benefits of having an EVF. Now imagine the fairly obvious answer as to why that wasn't ever implemented is because of the increased cost, size and weight, which is all fair enough. Plus it would have meant sacrificing the pop-up flash, which is a feature that every pro photographer relies upon on a daily basis, so we can't even consider removing that. <laughs> Are you serious? Just like a mirrorless camera, all of the key shortcut buttons are there because obviously this was aimed at pros and enthusiasts. So Pentax have done a really good job of making sure that you can easily access things like ISO, moving the AF points around. It even has an exposure compensation dial on the top, which I really, really appreciate. There is only one control dial on this thing, but if you're shooting in something like aperture priority, like I do most of the time, you can just stick it onto auto ISO and then use the exposure compensation dial to refine the exposure afterwards, which all can be controlled using just your thumb. When I first reviewed this camera, I do kind of remember giving it a hard time for the rather dated looking menu system. But fast forward 10 years and I kind of appreciate the nostalgia value that this thing gives me every time I dive into the menu system. The pixelated icons and the garish color palette kind of give me mid 90s handycam vibes, but visuals aside, the menu is actually really easy to navigate, which is something that even some modern day cameras don't always get 100% right. Now let's turn our attention to the front of the camera because actually the lens on this thing is very 
very impressive too. It offers a four times optical zoom, which roughly translates to a 28 to 112 millimeter focal range. Now, if you do need to push that a little bit further, you can extend it to 7.8 times using the digital zoom feature. Needless to say, having this much reach in the palm of your hand just makes this such a versatile tool. And that sets you up for just about any scenario. But most importantly, you can shoot from a distance in order to remain inconspicuous. It's also worth mentioning that this has a maximum aperture of f1.8 to 2.5, which means it's really good in low light conditions and keeping your shutter speed nice and fast. The focusing distance on this thing is very impressive too. You can take macro shots up to one centimeter away, which I found perfect for taking dick. Pictures aside, the AF on this camera isn't that bad either. There's a healthy amount of AF points that span across the majority of the screen, and I really didn't have any problems with it hunting wildly out of control. And that's only a good thing because unfortunately there's no manual focus dial. So if you do enter into manual focus mode, then you have to control the focus using the D-pad, which is a little bit slow and clunky. There are a surprising amount of features packed into this little camera, including sensor shift image stabilization, the option to toggle between electronic and mechanical shutter. Plus there's even a built-in ND filter, which is actually really handy if you want to add some blur and movement into your photos on a particularly bright day. But personally, I think the most impressive feature of all is the ability to set all of the sounds to cat noises. Well, why would you not want that? Behind the lens is a 12 megapixel CMOS sensor, though I should state that if you do want the full 12 megapixels, then you will need to shoot in a 4x3 aspect ratio. At 3x2, you are capped to 10 megapixels, and 16x9 images are slightly lower than that at 9 megapixels, but let's be honest, all of these options offer plenty of resolution for just day-to-day -day shooting. One nice thing about this camera is that it shoots in DNG RAW, which means that any photo editing software can handle the files without any issues. Overall, the image quality of this camera is very good, which is slightly unsurprising given the amount of effort that Pentax have seemingly put into the development of this camera. I really love the retro film-like aesthetic of the images that this camera creates. It almost appears as if the images have like a bloom to the highlights, which kind of makes it look like it was equipped with a Pro Mist filter. And when you pair these images with a film-inspired color grade, this is really a winning combo. Now, unfortunately, during the shoot, I did fail to notice that there was some fogging building up behind the lens elements. I'm still not entirely sure what caused it. I think perhaps there might have been some residual moisture inside the camera from it being stored incorrectly by the previous owner and then obviously shooting all day in the hot sunlight has just created condensation who knows if you do let me know in the comment section because i would love to find out but anyway that at least explains why in some of these photos there is a strong blur at the very center one thing i noticed when out shooting with this camera is that i am so used to carrying around a mirrorless camera and a big bulky lens on the front having something this small and compact almost feels similar to shooting with your phone but obviously with the pro features you would find in a mirrorless camera. Half of the time, most of the people just didn't notice I was taking their photo. I could blend into the background quite seamlessly. And fundamentally, having a camera that offers pro features whilst also being small and inconspicuous and something that's light enough and small enough that you can carry with you all of the time, which is only going to open up the door to more opportunities to take great photos. Sadly, Pentax never released an official successor to this camera, so this is the end of the MX range. But personally, I'm okay with that because I think it makes this little one of a kind camera all the more special.